Mobilizing people around the issues that matter to them requires a strong message, clear goals, and a good plan. Video is a powerful tool that can be used to bring people together to take action. We trained communities in making videos and in one of the areas where we trained communities, they made a film on uh, land rights in a very feudal part of Gujarat and all the videos actually end with a call to action. So the call to action in this video was uh, to stand up for their rights and ask for the land. Uh, video is a good tool because I think a lot of communities uh, do not have literacy and access to other, other forms of technology, for instance, internet. And in, in that sense, I think video is a very good medium to reach out to such communities because you see things happening right in front of your eyes and it, it really creates a lot of impact. And uh, as, as a result of this film, which was screened in around 25 villages, around 700 people took a rally out and uh, went to the local administrative office and filed complaints that they were not being distributed land. And although the application is still under process, the, the fact that 700 people got together and took a rally out was a great thing and it was one of the biggest impact that we've had. Online platforms, such as social network websites, can be used as virtual meeting spaces for people concerned about a particular need or issue. Rebecca Saabsade uses Facebook in her work with lesbian, bisexual and transgender women in Lebanon. Because Facebook is so popular in Lebanon, it allows the organizations Rebecca works for to connect with a large number of people struggling with discrimination and social pressures. But using popular social network sites like Facebook has disadvantages as well. And when I was working with, with marginalized society, it was different because mainly the, the pressure is social, so just by being out, it's a problem. Um, so we had to find a, ve a way to use this very, very popular tool in Lebanon without, um, without damaging their security or their um, anonymity. So what we did is that we started this very lonely profile that doesn't have any friends, that just contains very basic information, the logo, the name of the organization, the country, and what we work on, which is lesbians in Lebanon or trans in Lebanon. And uh, the whole point of this uh, profile is not actually and specifically social networking, it's just to help these women or whoever is looking for um, support for lesbians in Lebanon to just get to our website. It's linked to our website. I mean, we have profiles in different places, but this is the point. The point is to always uh, advertise for it in a very popular way and to get them to our website. Working with a very fragilized and marginalized community that I work with, we were aware that Facebook is not private at all. No matter what, what you try to do, it cannot be private. So if we start a group, for example, and uh, a lot of girls join that group or whatever, it will be very clear that these girls are lesbians, most probably. So what we had to do is to find a very inventive way of not connecting anyone to us. The Pink Chadi campaign in India also revealed pros and cons of using Facebook. Chadi means underwear in Hindi. The Pink Chadi campaign was developed as a response to women being attacked by a right-wing political group called Sri Ramsene simply because they were seen drinking in pubs. The Pink Chadi group mobilized 16,000 people to join the campaign within just three days, and it peaked a few months later with over 50,000 members. In a shocking incident of moral policing, hoodlums viciously attacked girls who were at the pub. At least two women... A lot of the images of this attack were broadcast on television across the country, and a lot of women and also a lot of other people like got very angry at how women were being treated. Um, by the Ram Sene. There was a lot of momentum on the online group, a lot of anger and resentment that had to be translated. One of the ways that it, in which it did get translated was the sending of the Pink Chaddis to Pramod Mutalik. There was a lot of media coverage as well um, of this act and in response what he has said first was that he would respond by giving pink saris because he wants to cover up our perversion with um, something decorous like a sari. The Pink uh, Chaddi campaign or the Pink Panties campaign has definitely been uh, successful in my opinion uh, because it has allowed for a space in which a conversation has happened between ordinary people and the Hindu right, which is not always possible. It is a non-violent response and it's, and it's not about beating up people who are involved in the campaign, which is very often what happens, that there is a violent response.
there were various problems with the online activism which made it difficult to translate into an offline mode and one of them was the fact that it was on Facebook and Facebook stops you from messaging the people in your group after you hit 5,000. So without realizing when we crossed that mark and became 16,000 and 40,000, we realized we could not communicate with anybody who was in the group anymore. And all they could be done was discussion boards and messages on the wall which were not effective enough to communicate to everyone. Later, the Pink Charlie campaigners learned that using Facebook had other disadvantages as well. The group's online presence was hacked into, defaced and later deleted while offensive messages were sent to the group's creators. Despite numerous requests on Facebook to re-establish the group, months later, no action had been taken. These examples highlight the need to be alert to both the opportunities and risks involved in using online platforms for activism.